Hey you guys, welcome back to See Mini Mom. Today I am sharing with you some easy skillet or one pan meals, so stay tuned. If you are new to See Mini Mom, I'm so glad that you found me. I'm Mindy and this is my kitchen and here is where I try to share with you guys some of the things that I am making for my family to save money and or time, and hopefully both. Today I'm gonna to share with you three meals that I made for my family using just a skillet or a pan. These were meals that came together very quickly and that made great weeknight meals for my family. Before we dive in, be sure to hit that like button and if you are not already, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications, especially if you like this kind of content because I'm usually putting out two videos a week. Let's jump in and I'll show you guys what I made. I'm really excited about tonight's recipe. It is from a website called 30 Handmade Days and I will leave that that recipe linked in the description box below and it is for porcupines in a skillet. I think one of the reasons that I like this is because it reminded me of a recipe my mom used to make growing up called porcupine meatballs and they're basically meatballs that have rice in them so as the meatballs cooked as they baked in the oven the rice would kind of stick out just a little bit from the meatball. So I kind of like that this is a skillet version because it's way easier I don't have to actually like roll everything into a ball. The other reason I like this is because it's pretty simple and I think it's going to be really kid friendly which my kids aren't super picky, but still it's a plus whenever something comes together really quick with really easy, simple ingredients. I think it's gonna be delicious. So let me take you down to the counter. I will show you the ingredients for this recipe and then we'll get it going. Okay, so here are the ingredients, pretty simple. I've got a pound of ground beef here. I'm sure you could use a little less if you wanted to. I would normally cut this in half, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the whole pound tonight. I've got one can of diced tomatoes, a few cloves of garlic and half of a yellow onion one packet of Lipton onion soup mix, salt and pepper to taste, one and a half cups of water. I'm actually gonna put this in the microwave. This is in a glass container, so I'm gonna pop it in the microwave because it calls for hot water. And then three quarters of a cup of white rice, and at the end, we'll top it with a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. So let's get started. I started out by chopping my onions and garlic and I added those to the pot with the ground beef so it could brown all together. And as soon as that was done browning, I just added the rest of my ingredients except for the cheese. So I added my can of diced tomatoes, my onion soup mix, a little bit of pepper. I decided not to use very much salt in this because I felt like the onion soup mix was salty enough on its own. My rice and then my one and a half cups of hot water. I made sure that I micro microwaved that water so that it was hot whenever I added it to the pan. I brought that to a simmer and gave it a stir and then I popped the lid on and I turned the heat down to low. I let mine cook for about 15 minutes and then I turned the heat completely off but I left the lid on for another 10 minutes or so to allow the rice to continue steaming and cooking. And once that time had passed, I went ahead and sprinkled the cheese on the top and then I put the lid back on for just a couple minutes to allow the cheese to melt and then it was ready to serve. That was it. I mean, this was a super easy meal. I served it alongside just some good old canned green beans and a little bit of toast. And this made fabulous leftovers the next day as well. This meal came together very quickly. It probably only took about 10 minutes of total work altogether and it was ready to eat in less than 30 minutes. So I will definitely be making this one again. I was so excited when Misen reached out and asked if they could work with me because little do they know, they've actually been working with me for over a year now. I have been using their chef's knife since August of 2020, so over a year. You have seen it in numerous videos. It is my go-to knife for cooking and for prepping, and I absolutely love it. So I was very excited when they reached out and said, hey, can we send you our stainless steel pan, which you will see in this video along with their chef's knife multiple times. Misen stainless steel pan is thicker. It makes for more distance between the flame and the surface of the pan and that allows the heat to evenly distribute and retain heat longer. I did not know this, but most 10 inch pans actually only offer about eight inches of cooking space and Misen actually designed their pan to have about 19% more cooking area than other premium pans. This means more space, more food, less overcrowding. I was also happy to learn that the Misen stainless pan is oven safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's induction compatible and dishwasher safe, although I will say that I typically wash my pans and my knives by hand. The Misen stainless pan is virtually indestructible and will easily last a lifetime even with constant daily use when 
when you care for it and use it appropriately. But one of the things that I really like about Misen is that I feel like it's a great value. Misen uses the same materials as the competition, but sells it for less than half the price. Right now, Misen is offering 20% off your first order if you go to the link in my description box and use the promo code MINDY. Again, go to the link in my description box and use promo code MINDY for 20% off your first order. Don't forget that the holidays are right around the corner and Misen cookware would make a great gift for the budding chef or the cook just starting out in their own kitchen. Thank you again to Misen for sponsoring this video and be sure to visit the link in the description box to get 20% off your first order with Misen. Tonight's dinner is a chicken pot pie noodle skillet, and it is inspired by something I saw on the website bellyfull.net. I will leave that recipe linked in the description box below. And it is a cold, blustery day here in Oklahoma, so this is really gonna hit the spot. But I have already run into one little snag, but fortunately I have a workaround. This recipe does call for about a cup to a cup and a half of cooked chicken. And so I had intended to either A, throw some chicken breast in the crock pot this morning so that I could shred it up tonight for this recipe and for some other uses that I want later in the week, or B, pick up a rotisserie chicken while I was out and about today, and I forgot to do both. But fortunately, I do have a can of chicken breast like this in the pantry. So I'm just going to open this up and drain the water out and we'll use this instead. So let me take you down to the counter. I will show you the ingredients and how I'm getting this together. It's going to come together really fast. And like I said, it's going to be really, really satisfying on a cold, blustery fall day. Here are the ingredients for tonight's recipe. I have one package of egg noodles and the recipe calls for 10 ounces. I'm probably actually only going to cook eight because this is, these are whole wheat noodles. So they're gonna like soak up a little bit more of the sauce, I think. And I think that will be enough for us. So I'm just gonna cook about, you know, two thirds of this bag. And then the chicken pot pie part is made up of half of a yellow onion and three cloves of garlic, which I have already diced and minced respectively. One cup of half and half, one cup of chicken broth, but I'm just going to use one cup of water and about two teaspoons of my chicken broth base, salt and pepper to taste, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour. Here is my chicken. I'm gonna make sure that I drain all the liquid out of that as well. And then I have one package of steaming the bag mixed veggies. I'm actually going to throw these in the microwave for just a couple of minutes so that they aren't completely frozen. If I had thought of it sooner, I could have just gotten them out and left them on the counter for about 30 minutes. I just don't want them to be frozen so that it throws off the temperature of my pan whenever I'm cooking everything. So this technically isn't a one pan or one skillet meal because I'm going to go ahead and boil the egg noodles in a separate pot while I am making the chicken pot pie filling. But if you wanted to, I think this is one of those recipes where you could serve it lots of different ways. Like you could serve it over rice. You could throw some biscuits in the oven and serve it over biscuits, almost like an open-faced chicken pot pie. And actually, I thought about just putting biscuits right on top of the pot pie filling and then sticking the whole pan in the oven. But I've decided just to go with this for tonight. I think everybody's going to really enjoy it. So I melted my butter in my skillet and I gave my onions and garlic a head start sauteing in that. And I don't care how often I do this, I don't think I will ever tire of the scent of onions and garlic sauteing in butter. Mm. Now I'm going to add my vegetables and I did, as I said, I put them in the microwave for just about two minutes so they are not gonna be ice cold. I don't want them to draw down the temperature of my pan too much. And I'm also going to sprinkle in my flour right now. I have my silicone whisk here. I'm just gonna kind of mix that around let the butter soak up the flour, let everything saute for a minute. I'm also going to season this with some salt and pepper here. I feel like sometimes we overthink it with the seasonings, you know, like salt and pepper go a long way. A little bit of my chicken broth base there. One cup of water. Give that a little stir. And my half and half. Yummy. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit to medium, but I'm gonna stay right here with it and use my whisk to kind of stir it around a little bit. I wanna bring this up to a low boil and just let it simmer for a few minutes until it starts to thicken. Now that this is starting to simmer, you'll be surprised how quickly it will thicken. And also since the half and half is in there, how quickly it will scald. So you wanna be careful not to be too far from it during this part of the process, but it will not take long. I 
not forgotten about my chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and just stir that in now. This smells so amazing right now. So at this point, if your skillet or your pot is big enough, you could just pour the noodles back in and just stir it all together. Or you could just, you know, take your smaller skillet and pour it over the top of your noodles in another dish. I think what I'm going to do is just spoon this right over the top of my noodles like so. Yum. People love it whenever I eat on camera, so we're gonna give this a little try. As soon as it cools down enough that it's not gonna burn my mouth, because it is hot off the stove. Mmm. I mean, such simple ingredients, but so good. Ah, oh, this is good. My kids are gonna love this. This is fantastic. Maybe I'll just eat it all and I'll cook them something else. <laughs> Tonight's recipe is coming from Creme de la Creme, and I will leave that linked in the description box below. It is a chicken and potatoes with Dijon cream sauce. So these are the ingredients right here. The original recipe calls for chicken breast, but I'm actually gonna use chicken thighs. So this is probably about two chicken thighs in here. There might be three in there, but I think there's just two. And then I have a little over half a pound of potatoes here. I just have a mix of red and yellow potatoes. These things came in my imperfect box. And then I have some olive oil and two tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna season that and brown it in the skillet with two teaspoons of Italian seasoning and salt and pepper to taste. And then when that's done browning, we're going to remove it and make the sauce, which takes two tablespoons of butter and two cloves of garlic, which I will mince, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard and a cup of chicken broth, a cup of half and half, and then salt and pepper to taste. And then we will put the potatoes and chicken back in the skillet and pop it into the oven to finish cooking. So let's get started. While my oven was preheating to 375, I went ahead and chopped up my potatoes, and I chopped those into about little one inch pieces there, as you can see, and then I followed the directions in the recipe and I put them in the bowl with the chicken, and I drizzled a little bit of olive oil on that, and then I added the seasonings, the Italian seasoning and a little bit of salt and pepper. I gave those a toss all together, and then they were ready to go into the skillet to brown. I melted the butter, two tablespoons of butter in my skillet, and then I also added about a tablespoon of olive oil according to the recipe directions. I placed my chicken pieces on one side of the pan and then I put my potatoes in the other side of the pan. My chicken browned for about four to five minutes on each side, so four to five minutes in, I flipped it over to the other side and I just kept kind of stirring my potatoes around to make sure that they had a chance at the bottom of the pan in the butter and the seasonings. When that was finished, I removed it to a pan, but it is not done cooking yet. I'm going to finish cooking it in the sauce, which we're gonna make up here in a minute. So I just removed it to a separate dish and set it aside until we were ready to um, put it back into the sauce. I decided at this point not to use the other tablespoon of butter that the recipe called for because there was still quite a bit left in the pan. So to that, I added my minced garlic, which I browned, and my chicken broth and my Dijon mustard, and I whisked that all together with a little bit of pepper as well. And then I whisked in my half and half. And my only thing about this recipe is that I feel like the sauce was just a little bit thin, and that was probably my fault because I used chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts, and maybe it rendered just a little bit more fat into the sauce than the chicken breast would have, but that's okay. The flavor still turned out fantastic. So once my sauce was done, I put my chicken and my potatoes back in the pan, and then I put the entire pan into the oven so that the chicken and the potatoes could finish cooking. That took mine about 20 to 25 minutes, but I always use my meat thermometer here just to make sure that the chicken is completely done cooking. I made up a little side salad to go along with this and then I dished the chicken and the potatoes into a bowl and I made sure that I drizzled a little bit of that Dijon cream sauce over the top because the flavor of that sauce is fantastic. In fact, had I known that it was gonna be just a little bit thinner, I probably would have made up some green beans and tossed the green beans in the sauce as well to serve along the side. I also could have thickened the sauce with a little bit of a cornstarch slurry while I was making it if I wanted it to be thicker, but the flavor of this was so delicious. All right, you guys, 
that's what I have for you today. I hope that gives you some ideas or some inspiration. And thank you again to Mizen for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box below to visit their website and check out their awesome products. I'll see you guys in another video very soon. Bye.